What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo, and this is the weekend of the Halloween trick-or-treat friendly on the Nintendo uh, battle competition site. So the rules for this are pretty simple. Only ghost types can enter, no Giratina, no Rotom, and you have to use a super size Gorgais in every match. Now of course they did just have an event that released a super size Pumpkaboo. Uh, I didn't take the time to rebreed my Gorgais because I didn't read the rules closely enough. I didn't notice that I could not use Pokemon that were not bred or caught or distributed in the Kalos region, so I couldn't use my Spiritomb or my Jellicent that I bred back in 5th um, gen. So that means I kind of scrambled last night, shoutouts to uh, Wave Bomber um, for helping me out with getting a Infiltrator Litwick really quickly last night. I was trying to scramble around and breathe some new things so that you can do 10 matches a day. And so my team is a Banded uh, Gorgeist, this isn't normally the one that I use. Um, Helen is kind of the thing that I just bring along for training and pick up will find me items every now and then But banded shadow sneak has been helping out a lot so far. I'm eight and four. I would have started the live recording yesterday But I have had pneumonia for the past several days and my voice keeps going in and out So if I lose my voice during the recording, that would be why um, It's really fun to start out with Gorgeist unless I'm in against other lead Gorgeist. I tend to lose against those but Bandit Shadow Sneak is typically the way to go. Um, if I'm faster and I use Phantom Force, then you use Phantom Force. Then they reappear after I try to attack them, so they get a free hit. So that's not so good. I also have Batosai, the Aegislash. I normally just bring it out to take a hit while it's in um, Shield Stance. And then I get to use Shadow Ball or Shadow Sneak. Of course, people are normally throwing around Ghost Moves. So it's very easy to get, it's very easy to get the Weakness Policy activated and use Shadow Sneak. Um, we also have the Assault Vest Trevenant, something that I bred just a couple of days ago as well. I really like the nickname that I came up with, Mortis Arbor, um, which of course is Dead Tree in Latin. But with the Assault Vest, it can take Shadow Balls really nicely. I just have to watch out for burn um, from things like Binette and Sableye, which of course I can switch out to get rid of that burn. But with only three Pokemon, that becomes a little bit suspect to do. I end up using uh, Shadow Claw about 95% of the time anyway. I've yet to get a critical hit with it. But uh, I, I use it a lot. Then of course I also have a Mega Gengar with a uh, Substitute, which has been fantastic. Of course, Gilimja is Shadow in Korean, and uh, it's been really fun using Gilimja just because I can substitute up against um, opposing Gorgais. I can substitute up against Banets who try to sucker punch me, and same with Spiritombs. Really, really nice to get that buffer going before I use Shadow Ball. Now it is important to remember that some Ghost types, such as Spiritomb and Chandelure, can use Infiltrator. Not normally worth your time stepping up against them because they will hit through your substitute anyway. And I also have a Choice Scarf Ignis, uh, or aka Chandelure. Using Infiltrator, this has proven its prowess a couple of times, just being able to hit through substitutes. It doesn't matter uh, how fast they are. I am normally faster with a Choice Scarf and I can hit through their substitutes. So that's been pretty fun to use. And finally, last but not least, is kind of like a little bit of insurance is a Mega Banette. Uh, I normally just kind of bring this in to use Taunt or Destiny Bond. If I see Sableye and Spiritomb, they're getting taunted. Uh, that's kind of how I deal with those guys. Uh, Shadow Sneak is nice just for a little bit of damage, but Banette normally gets burned. I haven't. I maybe should have played around with Substitute on Banette as well, but that's neither here nor there. So um, I think, like I said before, my uh, record is eight and four, I think I want to say. Um, of course, you just go to the battle spot competition thingy on your lower screen and go to the online competition and we're gonna battle now you can do 10 matches a day I got in my 10 yesterday and I did a couple today oh, okay I'm 7 and 4 there we go I wasn't too far off um, my current score is 1558 I've been having a lot of really bad luck with critical hits and special defense drops um, so the first opponent for today is gonna be Andrew 
Trick or treat is right. The participants of this competition get rare candies, as long as you don't have a lot of disconnects, and you participate in at least 10 matches. So let's see here. I expect that he's probably going to, he has to bring his gore guys, which means I have to bring mine, of course. I don't think I want to start with gore guys just because Shadow Sneak hits a lot of the things he has there. I imagine he's probably going to bring his own Gengar and Sableye as well, which means, hmm. I think starting out with my own Gengar and trying to get up a substitute is not a bad idea. And then using my own choice scarf. Well, he has a lot of special attackers. Let's go ahead and put Gorgeist in the second slot. And in the last slot, I think Trevenant might be good here. Unless he brings Sableye, in which case then Manette will probably be a better call. Um, and of course, Chandelure doesn't care about getting burned at all. So, let's go. I'm bringing Mega Gengar, so let's not bring Mega Manette. Let's just bring Chandelure. We'll see how this goes. Uh, the, the fun part about competitions like these really is everyone's relegated to the same general resources, but you get to see some really interesting ways that people use some Pokemon. Uh, for example, I got to see a Metal Burst Sableye the other day, which really surprised me because, of course, Sableye doesn't have... He only is weak to fairy types, um, so I wasn't expecting to knock it out in one hit. But he was able to get off the Metal Burst after I hit him with a Shadow Ball, so that was very unexpected. Um, Gengar versus Gengar, I normally just go straight for the Mega Evolution and the Substitute. Uh, looks like my Gengar's Gengar right is going first, so either he's not Mega Evolving. I had a match where someone didn't Mega Evolve and then they tried to Hypnosis me. That didn't work out too well for them. Uh, he's not Mega Evolving. I'm just going to go for the sub. Let's see, he might just attack. I'm faster, though. Okay, he is just going to attack. Great. Well, that works out quite nicely, because now that I know I'm faster, I can just Shadow Ball him back. So, this is going to be very, very fun. Uh, another thing I consider doing is rebreeding a Gengar to have Disable. Of course, he could be Focus Sash, which would be a pretty big problem. Um, let's see if he's Sashed here. If he is not Sashed... Oh, he is Sashed. Crap. Well, uh, Unfortunato right there. But that's okay, because I have priority with the Shadow Sneak. I have a priority... Uh, I mean, I have a really, really fast um, Chandelure. We're, we're not in too bad of respects here. Of course, Shadow Tag does not work on Ghost types either, so I'm really just Mega Evolving to get the power and the speed boost. Um, let's just go on out into Gore Guys too. I can Shadow Sneak with, and that way I don't have to necessarily lock myself in this early. And I can see if something else, because uh, he knows I'm carrying. I have to bring my Gore Guys, so why give him the information on my third Pokemon when I don't have to? So we're just gonna go ahead and Shadow Sneak away right here. And of course, this is a banded Shadow Sneak. He's going to switch out probably into Sableye, who could take it pretty decently. Oh, Chandelure. Maybe he has Flame Body. He's trying to get the um, Flame Body Axe. I'm not really sure why he switched out right there. Oh, that did a fantastic amount of damage. He does have Flame Body. I've had really bad luck with that this tournament. Uh, that's the fourth time it's been activated on me. No, wait, no. I'm thinking of something else. That's the first time I've had Flame Body activate on me. But that's okay, because I get to still finish him off. And, of course, Gengar only has 1 HP, so he's at a very easy range for another Shadow Sneak to finish him off. Um, I've had really bad luck with critical hits, though. Lots of those coming my way this tournament. Now, this is an okay position, because he only has his own Gorgeist left. And I already know from previous matches that uh, the Flamethrower from my Chandelure is going to be enough to finish him off. Of course, Flamethrower has a higher base power than Shadow Ball, so if you know what your opponent has left, you can use higher base power moves. Um, that's not going to come into too much play here because uh, Shadow Sneak is going to put him in a range where I can finish him off with just about anything anyway. So um, I am faster, which is surprising. I have a lot of HP. Oh, he's a very defensive girl, guys. He probably has Rocky Helmet. No, he has Trick. Okay, well, he just locked himself into Trick. You can have my Choice Band all you want to. What do you give me, though? A Flame Orb. Um, okay. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm certainly okay with that now that you're locked into Trick. We're just going to keep on Shadow Sneaking, though. I have no reason to switch on him to Chandelure. Uh, and my health is getting whittled down, and he has to use Trick again. Which means he has to get his own Flame War back, which is fine by me. Oh, he's going to go for Phantom Force. That's fine, too. Um, let's see. Phantom Force may not take me out. It seems like he's really defensive. Um, but I may die after the burn, of course. So, we'll just see here. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that's fine. Uh, well, I should very easily be able to take him out from this range with Chandelure. 
I don't see that being a problem. I don't think he can take me out with a Shadow Sneak, even with the Choice Band. So, uh, we're just gonna Flamethrower here. He's probably gonna Shadow Sneak. Oh, no. Okay, then. That's fine, too. He oh, yeah, that's right. He has my Choice Band, so he can't switch moves. Alrighty, that's gonna be it for Gorgeist, and Gengar is coming in on 1 HP. Unfortunately, he will not be faster than me. Uh, if he were a Scarf Gengar, he could be faster than me, but he doesn't have that. He may have Sucker Punch. Um, Gengar can use Sucker Punch, but it won't knock me out at full health, so... Uh, it's gonna be one more Flamethrower for the win here. Great, that puts me at 8 and 4, I believe, which is a, a nice, tidy win record there. So that's gonna be 12 matches for me. Thank you for that battle, Andrew. Uh, man, I managed to squeak by there, even though I was not expecting the trick from Gorgas. It didn't end up working out for him too well. Well, I guess I don't need to save these since I'm live recording them, so no point in that. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, we're gonna continue battling. So, I guess just a question for you all while I'm waiting for my next opponent is, give me some Halloween memories that you have. Uh, I don't have, of course, that many Halloween memories just because of um, kind of losing a lot of my memories from when I was younger, but one thing I do specifically remember is being dressed up as the Black Power Ranger and trying to go trick-or-treating, it was too cold out, and so I had to come back to the house and put on thermal underwear. That is one specific memory that I have. So if you guys have any other weird memories like that, feel free to toss them out in the comments. It's always fun to share. Uh, let's see, in this battle, hmm, his team is pretty similar to the last team, actually. Uh, Spirit Tomb is quite annoying to face against. So actually, I think in this battle, I'm going to go ahead and bring Wow, I'm not actually sure he, I don't, hmm, this one's a lot tougher to choose here, but let's go ahead and bring, hmm, he has more physical attackers, so I don't feel comfortable bringing Trevin in, so we're going to go ahead and bring Gengar, Gorgeist, Let's just bring my own Aegislash. It'll give me two ways to use uh, a little bit of priority there. And actually, no, because Aegislash likes to use Substitute, so we're just going to bring Chandelure instead, actually. We're going to go with the same three. Ah, uh, but yeah. So skip back to my house, put on some thermal underwear. Now we're nice and warm and ready to go. Unfortunately, by the time I kind of waddled back to the house in my cold um, Black Power Ranger suit, it was a little late to go back out, and so I only got about half of the candy that year. But on the plus side, I got to keep most of my candy. I don't know if you guys ever had a lot of that going on where your parents would go through all your candy and be like, you can keep that, you can keep this, this is like some weird homemade thing, throw that, throw that away. And it's just like, mm, you never knew, really know what people are going to do to their candy. Uh, but why take chances, I suppose, is the main thing here. So if he has Shadow Sneak, there is no point in me substituting just because he could always um, put me at a range where I'm too weak to make a substitute. So we're just gonna go right for Shadow Ball after Mega Evolving. Uh, let's see, another, when I was at the University of Alabama and I was um, one of the um, officers for the ABXY Gaming Network, one thing that we did one year for Halloween, was just kinda everyone came and dressed up. Fun times abound there. Uh, wow, maybe I should, he has a sash on this one. Let's see, he's vanishing instantly, so that means I need to put up a substitute so that I take less damage. <laughs> um, and so one year, everyone kind of just came and dressed up, and we were all playing horror games in the in the game room. That was a pretty um, pretty fun year right there. Uh, and I think for a lot of times, my, my costume was just wearing a cape in all black and not letting people see my face. And I played through the entirety of Simpsons Tapped Out in a cape. I have no idea why. Uh, but now we get to finish off his Gore guys. He probably has Shadow Sneak, but it's not going to KO me at this range. Ooh, he's switching out. Maybe in Spirit Tomb? I would like that. Any extra damage on Spirit Tomb is good damage. Good. Good, good, good. Now, you have to be careful when playing against Spirit Tomb. They are notorious for carrying Pursuit. Um, this one looks, uh, looks like a pretty normal build here. Um, I kind of want to force him into going for um, the Shadow Sneak. A sucker punch will KO me, so we're just gonna substitute up here. That way, if he tries to, um, okay, I'm not sure what he's doing actually. Will o Wisp maybe? Foul play. Okay, 
I am quite okay with that. Well, he has Infiltrator, so that was stupid of me. That's exactly what I was saying I should avoid doing in any of the match. I, I, I didn't see the pressure message, so I wasn't paying full attention. But since he has foul play, there's no point in um, going out into uh, my Gorgeist, because it has a higher attack stat. We're going to go with Chandelure. And we're just going to go for, I guess, Flamethrower, just to do more damage. Um, I'm not sure who his last Pokemon is yet, though. I know he has Gorgeist with 1 HP. Here's a Sucker Punch. This should not kill. I'm at full HP. He's not offensively invested. There we go. So a Flamethrower is going to do a nice amount of damage. Good, 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 good. I'll definitely take that. Now here, I'm expecting him to go for another Sucker Punch or he will lose his Spiritomb. So now is actually a good time to switch out into Gorgeist. Because then I can go for Shadow Sneak. So hopefully he goes for the Sucker Punch. Mm, and the answer to that is... There's the Shadow Sneak. Dang it. Oh well. It was definitely worth a, a shot there. That was a good play on his part. Fortunately, I had ah oh, the critical hit. That actually may make a difference here. He may be able to take me out with a sucker punch. That's all right though. We're just gonna go for our own. I could go for Phantom Force to ensure the KO. He's quite bulky. Let's go for Phantom Force. Oh, he's switching out. Yay, that worked out. Okay, good. Into his own Gorgeist. All right then. Okay, he knows I have a choice man. That's another reason I wanted to reread my gore guys, is just so I could um, get Frisk. But, eh, Helen's doing pretty well. So. Aw, oh, man. He's faster. That's annoying. Well, I lost this battle. That's quite alright. I'm gonna go for another Phantom Force, just on the off chance it's a speed tie. It is not. Yeah, I definitely lost this battle. I kind of played that battle all wrong when I was talking and I forgot that Spiritomb gets Infiltrator. Kind of dumb, honestly. Because now he can Shadow Sneak me with Gorgeist, he can Sucker Punch me, and this battle is over. But, that being said, um, that's why you gotta pay attention to those things. I didn't knock out any of his Pokemon while I was kind of pathetic. Alrighty then, but, um... I'm not, uh... I don't know, if you guys have any favorite costumes that you've had throughout the years, I really enjoy cosplaying as you've seen from when I go to conventions and things like that. Um, the most recent one that I did, of course, I missed out completely on GMX this past weekend because I have pneumonia, highly contagious variant actually, which is why I didn't just say screw it, I have the, medic I, I have the medicine, I'm not contagious, let's just go. But um, I didn't want to risk making everyone in my party and all the other congoers. Um, share in my misery, so I decided to, pa oh, to pass rather for this GMX. But I was planning on doing my updated Black Panther and, of course, uh, my Pokemon Fisherman con cosplay, which are both really, really fun. I would really like to construct a cowl or a mask for Black Panther, but that's pretty difficult to do, especially since I have no experience working with like liquid latex or rubber or things like that. And then, of course, to commission it is a couple hundred dollars, which I don't really have sitting around either. Or I would spend it on a capture card for my DS. So, that's neither here nor there. But that's kind of what I was planning on doing. This opponent has Kafa Grigas. I've only seen this Pokemon twice, and then every time I see it, they never bring it into the battle with them. Um, now, he has a lot more special attackers outside of... So, yeah, this is a good battle to bring Trevenant to. Actually, risking the, the old burn. So, we're going to start off with Trevenant. And he also doesn't have, he has Chandelure, so I'm going to bring, um, let's go in and bring Gengar as well. And this is actually not a bad battle to bring Aegislash to, but I don't know how Mummy affects Stance Change. Because I would hate to hit him with a Shadow Sneak and then for Stance Chain to activate. So we're just, we're just going to go with Gengar, Trevenant. Yeah, I like that. So, for those of you guys who are participating in this tournament, I hope you guys are having a good tournament so far. It's just a friendly, it's just an online competition. My voice is actually starting to wear out, so we're gonna, we're gonna keep all the words that I use to very profound and interesting thoughts. Why is the Sad Cebu sad? Is the canoe wood or aluminum? Do you guys even understand the VeggieTales references that I make when I make them? I don't know the answers to these things, but do you? 
Alrighty then, so this is good because he can't leap seed me. He may just burn me, which is fine. I'm just gonna Shadow Claw him. Um, I'm faster, that's the thing. Come on, I would love a critical hit. I've yet to see a critical hit with Shadow Claw. There's the Will-O-Wisp, that's fine. Uh, I can just switch out to get rid of that sucker. Uh, what's he gonna do though? Is he just gonna Shadow Sneak? If he's gonna Shadow Sneak, then I should go out into my own Gorgest. Mm. Yep. Let's get rid of that burn. No more burn for you, Trevenant. Although if you burn dead trees, they burn really, really fast, so probably not the best idea there. Ooh, ooh, that was a good switch. He ended up going for disable. Perfect. Now I get to Shadow Sneak. If he stays in, I think this will KO him. If he's faster, he'll get off his Shadow Sneak a little quicker. But I have max HP investment. So, not gonna help him out too much. I don't know what he went for. This should KO him though. It should. Yes, there we go. Didn't even need a crit. Good job, Helen. Showing why I don't need to rebreed my Gore guys. Um, I probably could have a more optimal move set on this one. Uh, Seed Bomb, Shadow Sneak, Phantom Force, and Trick. Definitely not necessarily optimal there, but you know, that's neither here nor there really. Uh, Coffer Grigus is probably just going to burn me as well. Um, I don't care about losing my ability to pick up, so... Hmm. Hmm. I think it's going to be best in here to just stay in here and go for a Shadow Sneak to see what he does. If he starts setting up with Calm Mind, that could be a real problem. But I should be faster than him with Trevenant to hit him with the Shadow Claw anyway. Of course, Kava Grigus has really high defense, so that may not be... Uh, it would be optimal to give him my Choice Band right here, but I don't have a way to do that. So let's just go for Shadow Sneak, see what he's going to go for. This is probably going to do barely a quarter, especially if he's max HP, max defense. Oh, he's offensive. No, that was a crit. Okay. There's the mummy. No more pickup ability. I can't pick up the candy off the ground. If you drop candy and you're trick-or-treating, don't pick it up off the ground. Oh, he's a weakness policy, Kafagrigus. Look at this guy. Shadow Ball incoming? Yes, it is. Well, Gore, guys, I'm happy you got that crit. That was the first crit I think I've gotten this entire... All... 12 matches that I've played. That's the first time I've got a crit. So I am quite happy about that result. Um, I don't want to risk him being faster than my Trevenant, so we're going to go out into Gengar, Mega Evolve, and pop him with a Shadow Ball. I don't believe Kafagrigus gets any priority moves, so there is no harm, no foul here at all. Uh, it's actually pretty fun to use Mega Gengars ever since he was banned for, you know, Smog on OU rules. You don't see him anymore, and then when you do see him, people are running the um, Parish Trap set, so that's kind of annoying. I am building a doubles team built around Parish Trap, which has been really, really fun finding partners for Mega Gengar that can function on their own and also still be offensive threats or they're very, very bulky. Uh, one partner that I had a lot of um, success with in practice was Altaria, just because it's weak to completely different things than Mega Gengar. Um, and it still can use Parish Song, so that way if I end up using Gothitelle and Altaria, I can still pull out the Parish Trap while having an offensive presence. I uh, can also live a lot of interesting moves, such as um, if you EV it right, rather it can live Draco Meteors and those types of things from Salamence, which are really, really popular. So this should be enough to pop this Chandelier. Okay, no sash there. Fantastic. That was a that match worked out pretty well. I'm not sure why he went for a disable with his Gorgeist. Um, I guess that makes sense because I would not have stayed in. I mean, if I had stayed in, my best move, of course, was Shadow Claw but I wasn't gonna stay in while I was burned because there was no way I could have KO'd him with the amount of damage I had there, so. No need to save that one. Uh, the battles that I had yesterday, I will post an error rate at some point, probably before the weekend is over. So now we're at nine and five. Ooh, looking for another trainer. It'd be really cool to end this above 1650. You kinda gotta claw your way up there as far as points go. But, um, let's see. You know what I should do before October is over? I should try reposting that ghost type retrospective. That thing was a complete pain and it got me copyright strikes on my channel, which I don't know why still. Uh, but if I, I still have the narration, so if I can re-edit the video, it might be worth posting that just because it's October and it's, it's very topical right now. So here we see a lot of, well, everything's really bulky there except for um, the frost last. So, Hmm. It might be in my best interest to... Hmm. 
I don't know if Gengar has the stopping power to deal with Jellicent in one hit. But it's going to be better to bring... I think this time I'm going to bring Gengar first, then Gorgeist. And then... And then Chandelure again, actually. Just because I, I if I see that he has some Frost Lass, the priority Ice Shard won't be as useful. No sense in opening myself up to more weaknesses from Priority Ice. I'm surprised that there's no, um, uh, there's not like a, a special type Priority Ghost move. That seems like a shoe in with the whole, with all the references to the Lost World and things like that from the anime and even in the games in some respect. But he's starting off with his Bonnet. This is fine by me. Um, he might try to Sucker Punch. That's fine because I'm going to Mega Evolve and substitute in his face, so. He might also try to Mega Evolve Protect, which is really, really popular. Either way though, I'm gonna be able to get around it. I should be able to KO him in one hit, so if he tries a Destiny Bond, that's gonna be a little bit annoying. But, um, yeah, so you know, we'll see where this goes. If he Destiny Bonds, I'm just going to Sludge Bond to see if he has it though. So here's my substitute. Oh, he used Protect, fantastic. Gonna get off my substitute. I'm gonna go for Sludge Bomb, or maybe I'm gonna go for Thunderbolt actually, because that won't kill, but it'll put more damage on. Um, I expect him to use Destiny Bond at least. I don't know. Let's see if he has it. Destiny Bond, Destiny Bond. There it is. All right, so the Thunderbolt was a good play. And this definitely won't kill. Oh man, but it's a 2-8 KO easily. So for those of you who don't know, when Destiny Bond is used, the effects of it remain in effect until the next attack is chosen. So right now, if I KO'd him right now, Destiny Bond will still take me down with him. Um, and what's very likely is that he'll just use Destiny Bond again. And that's kind of where the fun guessing game comes in. Uh, let's see here. And when I say fun, I mean annoying, by the way. Let's just try to go for Sludge Bond to poison him, because he's going to Destiny Bond again. And the poison should not KO him, because Ghost resists poisons. But if I can get a poison on him, that would be great. Because that won't activate the Destiny Bond. Oh no, I KO'd him! Oh, oh well. Sorry about that, Gengar. You're too powerful, apparently. <laughs> uh, I, I, I did not expect it to KO from that. If Thunderbolt is not stat... Well, I guess Sludge Bomb is stat, but it's resisted. So they end up being around... The same base power, roughly. Uh, let's just go ahead and bring in my Chandelure, because I've seen his Mega. I know he has to have a Gorgias in the back. Um, okay, he brought out his own Chandelure. But is, if he's not Scarfed, I win this. <laughs> That's how that works. Because we're just going to Shadow Ball right away. Alright, he's not Scarfed. Is he Sashed? Watch as the questions roll in. Okay, he's not Sashed. Free takedown on Chandelure, which means his last Pokemon is Gorgias. This battle should be in the bag. Um... And that's the only thing about being forced to use Gorgeist. I didn't even realize that until my first match, because I just thought you had to have Gorgeist on your team. Um, actually, it would have been a lot smarter for him to bring in Gorgeist second here, because he knows that my last is Gorgeist as well. So, he should have brought that in before he brought in his Chandelure, because then he could have seen my Choice Scarf. But anyways, though, that's neither here nor there. Shadow Sneak is not enough to KO me. It's not, I don't think it does half. Yeah, it doesn't. And so here's the Shadow Ball. We should KO him. Boop. And good enough. Excellent. But yeah, it's being forced to use Gorgeis is an interesting rule, just because um, once you know your opponent's going to bring, then it literally comes down to what moves, what set does that opponent have? Because Super Size Gorgeis has much higher HP and attack and defense, whereas the smaller it gets, those stats go down, but it starts getting faster in exchange. So you kind of have to be aware of what the differences between the sizes are. I've had a lot of fun with the small size Gorgeist being kind of a speedy sub -seater. You may have seen that in one of my previous battles. Um, being able to Will-O-Wisp, Leech Seed, Substitute quickly, and Seed Bomb, of course, just to have something so it's not taunt bait. But being able, I wish they had allowed people to use different sizes of Gorgeist instead of just the super sized one. Because that, I think, would have been more interesting because you get a lot more, um, you get a lot more different flavors of candy in your bucket when you allow different types of Gorgeist. I don't know what I'm saying. 
Darn it, I'm sick. Leave me alone. All right, so in this battle, we see... Ooh, this is the first time I've seen someone bring a Dusclops. Interesting. Jellicent once again. I really wanted to bring Jellicent just to, to kind of be an annoying King Bloop to sit in there and suck up Shadow Balls. I could have used so many better words there. But, I have, of course, the ones that I have bred were all in fiction. I think I bred four different Jellicent in fiction. But that's neither here nor there. In this battle, I think it's going to be pretty potent to start off with Chandelure. Um, hmm. Is that what I want to do? I see I'm starting off with Bennett, so... I think I want to start off with my own Chandelure. No, no, no. Um... Hmm. Yeah. Well, no. I want to bring my own Bennett. That way I can taunt his Bennett in case I run into that issue again. And, of course, Gorgeist again. And... Hmm. Dusclops is very, very, very bulky. So... Let's go ahead and bring E to Slash. Just so I have some real nice stopping power there. Because I can't use Mega Gengar and Mega Bennett. So... It'll be interesting to see who he starts off with. I hope I don't see Dusclops in this battle. Um, I think it would take three Shadow Balls to kill it, or two from E to Slash. Which, and also it's slow, and while I do have a relaxed nature E to Slash, he may be slower, depending on the type of build he's running. That could be very annoying. But his first is his Chandelure, which is nice. I can sucker punch the hell out of that thing. Um, he can also willow with me, so... Yeah. He has a Focus Sash. Dang it. That's good to know, though. Um, hmm. Well, I think it's just going to be best to Mega Evolve and Shadow Sneak him. I don't... I think he can KO me in one hit. I'm not sure, though. But if I go in and Shadow Sneak him, then I can finish him off easily with another Pokemon. So it's just going to be best to get some guaranteed damage here, I think. Uh, and you don't see Mega Ben that much during competitive play just because his Prankster ability in the Mega Evolve form does not activate the same turn he Mega Evolves. Uh, that'd be really nice if it did, though. He'd be a lot more popular if that were a, a thing. But, of course, the turn priority is set um, before then, so that's neither here nor there. Shadow Ball's probably going to KO. Yep. That's okay, though. I kind of expected that outcome. And now I can just finish him off with a Shadow Sneak from my Gorgeist. So... We're going to go on out in the Gorgeist. And Shadow Sneaks abound. That is a move I end up using more often than anything, actually. Much more than a Shadow Ball, which I was a little bit surprised by. There's a lot of sneaky balls in this match. Very sneaky. Uh, so here comes another Shadow Sneak. From my Gorgeist. Hopefully he's not Flame Body. That would be a little annoying. And that should finish him off. Yay. Yay, no Flame Body. Good stuff. Okay, so now I'm going to guess Dusclops. I really don't want to see Dusclops, but I, I I just feel it coming. I feel it's on its way. No. No. Okay, good. Well, no, that's not good either, actually. Dang it. Um, it would still be nice to have Taunt here. We're going to switch out into my own Aegis Slash, hoping that he just um, attacks. That would be nice. Because I'll can i be able to live an attack from him, and then that'll activate my weakness policy, is what I'm thinking here. Okay, he is switching stances, and he's going to blade form, and he's shadow sneaking. Alrighty, perfect, because that's going to activate my own. Great, I have plenty of HP left after that, too. <clears throat> the question is, can I live another one of those? That first one did 83, so it did one more HP point, and then I have HP left to give. Hmm. I feel like he's just going to go back into his other stance, so we should Shadow Ball here, I'm pretty sure. There's no point in King Shielding. Yeah, let's just Shadow Ball. Oh, he's going to try to for the Shadow Sneak KO. Alrighty. Come on. Oh, nope. Nope. Well, I just lost this battle. I think that came down to a min-max damage roll right there. I had 83 HP left, and yeah. What a lot of people don't realize though is that Phantom Force goes through um, King Shield, and so if he doesn't know that, I have a chance here actually. If he tries to block it with this King Shield, oh, he's gonna switch! Hooray! Alrighty, cool. Um, he's gonna bring back out his own Gorgeist, I'm assuming. Yep. Hopefully, I'm faster. Otherwise, I definitely lost. 
Pew. The um, animation for Phantom Force is very cool. Hopefully he doesn't have his own Phantom Force. Come on. Okay, good. Get Rex on. Phantom Force from behind. Boom. Slap you with your own pimp. Anyways, uh, Evil Tall also gets Phantom Force. Um, Shadow Force from Giratina does look a lot cooler though, I must say. In one of the release trailers for Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, they showed, hey, you can get all the legendary Pokemon between um, flying around in the skies and that game, and of course, X and Y. Uh, so that's been pretty entertaining, I guess, to see all those. If he Shadow Balls me, that's gonna hurt. Shadow Claw. Okay, I might be able to live that, actually. Nope. Critical hit. Nope. Wow, he, he's just that powerful. Dang it. I, I think I really misplayed in that battle with uh, that switch out there. If I had, Maybe if I should have just gone for the Shadow Sneak. I don't know. It's hard to say. Interesting match there, though. At least I didn't have to battle Dusclops. <laughs> I don't know. Either way, though, communicating. That's another loss. Not doing too well with these, I gotta say. And I don't know if it's just because I'm making bad plays, or if it's because I'm sick, or if it's because I'm talking while I play. Either way, though, I am having fun, which is kind of the main point of these quote-unquote friendlies. Uh, I just like to keep my win ratio. I want to have more wins than losses at the end of the day. That's kind of what I aim for whenever I play these friendlies. Now for the International Challenge Division thingies, I take those a good bit more seriously, and so I like to really focus on those. Man, three Pokemon that I did not want to see, Dust in the Wire, Cofagrigus, and Spiritomb. Very bulky. Very annoying. Um, he has a lot of different ways to burn me, so we're not going to bring Trevenant. I think it is a good idea to go ahead and bring... Uh, he has Spiritomb, so I don't want to rely on Mega Gengar. So, <clears throat> he does not have his own Banette, though. So that means I can probably take something down with it. Also, it'll be good to taunt things like Spiritomb. Well, I don't want to taunt Spiritomb, actually. He'll just foul play me in the face. Um, hmm. I think here I just want to bring Aegislash first, and then Banet, and then... then Gorgax. I, I love how I was pondering that as if I had a choice on my last Pokemon when I had not chosen Gorgax. That is... Huh, so my camera just stopped recording randomly. I don't know when it actually stopped recording. But I re-recorded, so I don't know. Hopefully there's no gigantic break in the action there. This is the first time I've recorded this long of footage. I think I've been going about 30 minutes. Yeah, right around 30 minutes. So we both start out with our Yuta Slash, actually. Um, this is kind of a who blinks first scenario. Oh, it's not letting me record anything else. Well, damn. I'm gonna try one more time. Oh, I don't have any more storage on my device. Well, that is a thing. Well, I guess I will go ahead and end this recording here. I hope you guys enjoyed this footage, and I'll be post-recording the rest of the stuff later on. Alrighty. Bye now.